Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome to the channel. Today we will discuss some multiple choice questions from the topics diseases of the external nose and diseases of the nasal septum. Uh, these individual topics have already been uploaded and the links for those videos is there in the description. So you are requested to please uh, check out those videos before uh, going through today's video so that you can have a solid grip theoretically about these topics and uh, please don't forget to subscribe the channel so that uh, you are not going to miss important topics and important videos and uh, please like the video and share it with your friends also because uh, spreading of knowledge is a sadka jariya so you must also contribute in that so cottle's test tests the potency of the nares in there is clinically there is a test which is called as cottle's test and uh, very easy i will just narrate the description of this test uh, what we can find out is so the options so in case of deviated nasal septum usually the obstruction is at the nasal valve level which can be checked clinically very easily by portal's test nasal valve is formed by this anterior nasal valve or internal nasal valve also this is the narrowest part of the nose and is less well defined physiologically then anatomically it is formed by the lower edge of the upper lateral cartilages the anterior end of the inferior turbinate and the adjacent septum together with the surrounding soft tissues so it is formed by the lower end of upper lateral cartilages and the anterior end of the inferior turbinate and the adjacent septum the cottle's test is there to check the potency at this level and this is very easy and the first question was also about cottle's test so what is cottle's test or cottle's maneuver very simple test just ask the patient to withdraw the cheek gently with one or two fingers laterally and this test is used to determine if the most significant site of nasal obstruction is at the valve or further inside the nasal cavity so this is how the test is being done on the side of obstruction the patient is asked to withdraw the cheek with one or two or three fingers and if patient says that obstruction is relieved or obstruction is improved so it means the obstruction is at the level of nasal valve and usually it is due to the deflected nasal septum now as we just use the term cottle's maneuver or cottle's test there is another terminology which is cottle's line and the third one is cottle's areas so with just reference to that i found it appropriate to describe all these three together so cottle's test we just narrated then there is cottle's line it is an imaginary straight line which is drawn or which connects the this uh, crest of maxilla with the nasal process of the frontal bone and it divides the nose into anti nasal septum especially in the anterior part and the posterior part so we can have an idea that the deflection especially in case of deflected nasal septum whether this deflection is there in the anterior part or in the posterior part or in both parts so cottle's line is an imaginary line which is a straight line which connects the nasal process of the frontal bone to the maxillary crest and it divides the nasal septum into anterior part and the posterior part and these are parts not exactly the halves as you can see in posterior part it is more than than the anterior part then 
Another third term is what we call as quartals areas. The according to quartals areas, the nasal septum is divided into five areas. Quartal area number one is nostril. Number two is nasal valve area, which is the narrowest part of the nose. The third one is the area which is beneath the bony and cartilaginous vault and it is also called as attic. Number four is anterior aspect of the nasal cavity including the heads of the turbinates and the infundibulum. And area five is the posterior aspect of the nasal cavity including the tails of the turbinate. Osteomyetal complex, it connects the nasal cavity with the maxillary sinus. Rhinophyma is associated with hypertrophy of spacious glands and we know the skin of the external nose, at the tip of the nose, it is thick, it is containing these spacious glands, while the skin which is lining the upper part of the external nose, that is thin and is devoid of these glands. So, the this rhinophyma, which is a benign tumor due to the hypertrophy of the spacious glands, it is also known as potato tumor, it will be confined only to the tip of the nose and usually it is preceded by the patient is having acne rosacea. This is also called rhinophyma or potato nose or potato tumor, benign tumor of the hypertrophy of the spacious glands. So this is also seen in, potato nose is seen in rhinophyma. Septal perforation is not seen in we know that the granulomatous diseases and the trauma, especially the surgical trauma, can cause septal perforation. But this rhinophyma, as I just mentioned, that this is a benign tumor of the spacious glands which are present on the tip of the nose. So externally it is present there. So it will not cause the septal perforation. While rest of all four options, they can cause septal perforation. A patient presents with nasal obstruction and blood stained crusts. Septal perforation is seen on examination. Common cause of septal perforation is. Now all these options, they can cause septal perforation. But in a previous video also, I just mentioned that in multiple choice questions, more than one option may be correct. And we have to choose the single best answer, the most appropriate answer or the most common, uh, you know, etiological factor or disease, whatever it is. So here, in subtle perforation can occur in granulomas due to nose picking also. Even rhinolith can cause, septal abscess can lead to septal perforation and septal surgery of course. So out of all these, which one is the most common or single best answer? It will be itrogenic trauma. Itrogenic means surgical trauma, especially nasal septal surgeries. SMR used to be a very common cause for septal perforation because SMR is a radical surgical procedure. But as we have, you know, shifted to septoplasty nowadays, which is a conservative approach for septal uh, deflection surgeries, so it has led to less incidence of septal perforations. Now, bony septal perforation occurs in. Now, all these granulomas all these five granulomas which are there in the option, they can cause septal perforation. But out of all these, syphilis is the most common one which cause the bony part of the nasal septum perforated, while others they will start from the cartilaginous portion. A young man presented with pain around the bridge of the nose relating to forehead and diagnosed as Sluder's neuralgia. What is the cause of this neuralgia? The cause is that the middle turbinate is pressing on the nasal septum, that due to some disease, there is hypertrophy of the middle turbinate. Now this middle turbinate 
is compressing on the nasal septum which will lead to Sluder's neuralgia and uh, Sluder's neuralgia because it is due to the hypertrophy of the middle turbinate which is pressing on the nasal septum. So if we use the nasal decongestants, temporarily it will relieve the pain of the patient because it will decongest it so that the middle turbinate will go shrink and it will go away from pressing the nasal septum. This Sluder's neuralgia, it is synonymously known as anterior ethmoidal neuralgia. So it means anterior ethmoidal nerve is the one which is involved in this neuralgia. Pain is localized to a single area on the face on just one side, usually on the bridge of the nose due to the compression of the deviated septum and middle or superior turbinate. Pain is described as just like any other neuralgia, shooting type or very sharp pain. Features associated with deflected nasal septum or deviated nasal septum include all of the followings except. So four options are correct. One will not be there in case of deflected nasal septum and that will be atrophy of the turbinates. Because nasal obstruction is the main symptom of the deflected nasal septum. If we have to choose a single symptom caused by deflected nasal, that will be nasal obstruction. Then recurrent sinusitis, of course. Then epistaxis, yes, nasal bleeding can also occur somewhere. And hypertrophy, especially on the concave side in C-shaped deflected nasal septum due to the compensatory hypertrophy in the inferior turbinate, which will cause bilateral nasal obstruction in a case of C-shaped deflected nasal septum that can occur. But atrophy of the turbinates does not occur in case of deflected nasal septum. All about the vestibule of the nose are true except it is the entrance to the nasal cavity. Yes, it is lined with skin. Yes, it contains spacious glands and hair follicles. Yes, it is lined by mucous membrane. No, because if it is lined with skin, then how it can be lined with the mucous membrane? It can be seen without nasal speculum. Yes, actually it should be examined without nasal speculum. So the answer here is it is lined by mucous membrane. No, it is lined with the skin. Nasal septal hematoma. It is a benign tumor. No, it is a collection of blood between nasal mucosa and perichondrium. No, it is a collection between perichondrium and septal cartilage. It is not between mucosa and the perichondrium, rather mucopericondrium and cartilage. So in between is that is the plane where there is collection of it is mostly unilateral. No, it is always or mostly it is bilateral because of gravity from the caudal border. The blood is, you know, which is being collected there. It goes towards the other side. So there will be bilateral nasal swelling, which will lead to bilateral nasal obstruction in a case of septal hematoma. It is mainly treated by aspiration. Aspiration is one of the mode for treatment of nasal septal hematoma. But if we go for mainly or mostly, then it will be in CNN drainage under aseptic measures. It is usually associated. So all these four are wrong. So it is usually associated with trauma. Yes, it is usually associated with trauma. Reduction rhinoplasty. So reduction will be for when there is increase in something. So that is hump nose. So when there is hump nose, then we have to reduce it. So that's why we will do what we call as reduction rhinoplasty. In case of saddle nose deformity, where the nose has, you know, uh, gone downwards. So there we have to enhance it. So there we have to put some graft material there inside to align the nasal septum and uh, nasal uh, dorsum of the nose. So there we do augmentation rhinoplasty. In case of saddle nose, augmentation rhinoplasty. In case of hump nose, reduction rhinoplasty. Ideal nasolabial angle in males is the mean angle for ideal male 
nasolabial angle is 95.96 degrees plus minus 2.57 degrees. So the mean angle for women is 97.7 plus minus 2.32 degree. So based on these standard deviations, the ideal nasolabial angle would be 93.4 to 98.5 degree for men and 95.5 to 100 degrees for women. So here we will go for 95 degree angle in case of males. Nasofrontal angle. The results demonstrated that a nasofrontal angle of approximately 130 degree is ideal with the range of 127 to 140 two degrees deemed acceptable. So here we will go for 130 degree. After three days of trauma to the nose, three days, a patient presented in ENT OPD with bilateral nasal obstruction, fever, frontal angle and Frontal headache, sense of pressure over nasal bridge, on examination soft fluctuant swelling of nasal septum is found. So what is the diagnosis? So I give you a pause for a few seconds. Make a diagnosis in your mind. Now you can look for options. Hemangioma. Hemangioma cannot present like this. Septal bleeding polyp will present with uh, bleeding of course. Septal hematoma, septal fracture. So there is close tie because there is history of trauma. So close tie between septal fracture, septal hematoma and septal abscess, isn't it? So septal fracture, in septal fracture there will, maybe it is associated with some swelling or not, but there will be a deformity which is not mentioned here. So the answer is why septal abscess? Why not a septal hematoma? First thing is because after trauma to the nose, initially it may be hematoma because hematoma will also present with bilateral fluctuant swelling and bilateral nasal obstruction. But now already three days have passed. So even if it was hematoma, there is every chance of that within 48, after 48 to 72 hours, for uh, hematoma, there is every chance of infection, first thing. Then patient is presenting with bilateral nasal obstruction, which can be there in, in hematoma and in case of abscess, but he also has a, is having fever. So in hematoma, there will be no fever, but now infection has occurred. There is collection of pus. So fever is there. Frontal headache, sense of pressure over nasal bridge is also more in case of septal abscess. On examination, soft fluctuant swelling of the nasal septum, which will be bilaterally in both these, while there will be a difference of on examination, the color of swelling will be reddish in case of hematoma, while in case of abscess, it will be pale in color, which is not mentioned here. So, three days history with fever and uh, more sense of pressure over bridge of the nose. So, all these features, we will go in favor of septal abscess instead of septal hematoma. What is true about functions of paranasal sinuses? There are so many para, paranasal sinuses functions. So, they produce resonance of the sound. So, with that, we come to the end of today's discussion. So, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the channel.